Hey guys, you're watching the Best Practice Show. We take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're looking at getting healthy or you're trying to help your patients get healthy, you're going to want to see this. This is going to be amazing. The question is, do you have the guts to enjoy optimal health with Dr. Uchi Odiatu, one of the world's greatest experts? Do not miss this. Do me a favor. Grab a pen and hit the share button. We'll see you in a few seconds. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practice Show. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everything. This has been so much fun doing this. And uh, we're just grateful for all the feedback, suggestions, and the things that you want to see. And today is no exception. You're going to absolutely love this from one of our favorite guests, uh, who I want to have back all the time. Because as I said to you before we got started, Uchi, you're like in a category one. There's only one person doing what you're doing. Now, I have so much to say about you personally. Uh, but before, you know, before we get started, we are shooting this live on Facebook. So as you have questions, they come up. Add them to the feed, and I'll ask Uche directly. We'll get the word straight from the master while he's on live. If you have questions later, because we have a lot of dental students watching these things and watching them late at night, continue to add questions to the feed, and we'll do our best to see if we can't get you answers to them, because we want you to get the most get the most out of this. And you know, Uche, you were one of our main guests last year, just kind of in season one. We're now in season two, up over thirty two thousand followers. A great deal of that has to do with you. You're just bringing great content, great things to talk about. Now, one more thing. I had a team member at Chicago um, and the rest of our teams were talking about, she went to see you. She's like, oh my gosh, that guy's amazing. So if you haven't seen Uchi, you got to go see Uchi because it's there's nothing like it. You can't even describe what happens. You, you were telling me sometimes you have 200 slides, somebody will fall asleep in the audience and you'll go work on the guy that's sleeping, right? Get him doing some Tai Chi or whatever. You know, it's kind of a fun interactive experience. Some chakra intervention, that's what happens. Like he, he, he paid, you know, $600, $1,000 to be there. He needs to be awake. So I'm, do, I'm helping him absorb the most impact he can for a better life. Yeah. Well, and if you fall asleep in one of your lectures, you got, you got problems. I mean, big problems. Yeah. Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. We, sl we slide them right in next door to the sleep medicine lecture. So yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now, I know who you are. A lot of our viewers know who you are. We have some younger dentists watching, maybe some dental students that may not know who you are. Who is Dr. Uchi Odiatu? And tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, uh, and where you're from. Loaded question. You know, the Buddhists say you can't put yourself, you know, put yourself in the same part of a river twice. I am an amorphous student of the universe. Um, I know, uh, Kurt, you're calling me an expert, but I'm reading, I'm writing, I'm downloading articles. I'm, I got two books on the go. Right now I'm listening to a proteinoholic by a medical doctor, a gastric bypass surgeon. Um, I'm a dentist for the last 29 years, believe it or not. I'm not sure if it's Neutrogena or Isogenics. I'm not sure what's doing it, but the skin stays supple. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm a certified trainer in two different organizations. I've competed in athletic competition around the world. I uh, got four kids, amazing wife. I have, uh, I'm working out most days of the week. Uh, Carrie and I have to tag team because it gets that uh, busy at home. Um, the last thing I want to do is have people come up to me with my two year old and say, is that your grandson? So uh, mm -hmm. my big why is just uh, staying young and toned and youthful enough. So I look like dad. So um, I love to share the biggest, one of the biggest joys that comes to me is helping people get healthier. So whether it's chair side in the dental office or from the lectern in front of you know, a thousand people, um, I am here to serve, and I think every one of us is looking for a better life, and I think uh, there's no better chance of having someone who, who knows maybe a little more than average because I'm doing the, the, the investment in time uh, to help someone. So I get a lot of joy from getting neat Facebook messages and emails a week or two weeks later saying, ooch, ever since I saw you, I've lost 10 pounds, or my office now is a wellness center. We've got apples in the reception area. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, number, two things. Number one, you do serve really well, and you are changing so many people's lives. I feel like I'm healthier every time I listen to you. So um, you're expanding our brains and making our bodies better. Now, today we're going to be talking about gut health, something that is a brand new science. Now, first of all, help us with two things. Number one, what is that, and why is that so important in today's day and age? 
Well, it's bizarre. We have a lot of chronic diseases, which are, they, you know, experts say just tolerate or just, uh, you know, just take painkillers. And uh, we're searching for why, 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 why the allergies, why the asthma, uh, why the antibiotic resistance, why resistant body fat? How can people on diets and they can't lose weight? Uh, why is cancer now uh, the number one killer of uh, people in Ontario, Canada? And why did it pass heart disease? So it's only the last 10 years people have, and experts have looked into the science of the microbiome. Before, up to about 10 years ago, most people thought of bacteria as being a bad thing, right? Sanitize it, get rid of it, sterilize it, disinfect your counter, disinfect your kid's hands up to the elbow when they come in from playing. Make sure mm -hmm. your food is sterile. The less yeah. bugs, the better. The more antibiotics you take, the better. And, um, and up to about, about 10 years ago, we realized, hey, this bacteria could be doing us, uh, getting rid of it, could be doing us harm. And uh, the first phase of the Human Bike Microbiome Project finished in 2012 at the National Institute of Health. And it was mind-blowing. Uh, Scientific American in 2015 and in Nature magazine said what they found out about gut flora and its impact on our health um, is shaking the foundation of medicine and it's shaking the foundation of nutrition. And uh, you, you know we are what we eat. Mm -hmm. So um, everything you are in, in you see is because of the food you eat. And scientists are now saying the gut flora basically digests your food. You don't even digest your own food, Kurt. You think you do. You swallow the chicken. Guess what? Right. You don't digest the chicken. Guess what? Bacteria do. Wow. Uh, there's 30 human enzymes that digest food. There's 6,000 bacterial enzymes. Mm -hmm. So if people can't digest food or intolerant of something, have an allergy to something, or can't stand eating broccoli or, or apples anymore, it, instead of an allergy problem, it, scientists are now saying it could be a gut flora problem. So you need to get your gut flora to be more diverse so you can eat more. Mm -hmm. um, have, I, have, have I intrigued you? Is this, is this It's very intriguing. Now, I, I want to know where to start because, you know, as you and I were talking about before, not only are we going to talk about the impact of a dental professional, but we're also going to talk about its impact on our patients, the treatment planning, health, all that stuff. I'd love to know its implications in perio. I mean, there's so many questions that we have, but let's start at the very beginning. If somebody doesn't know what gut flora is, what do we need to know from the very beginning? Just basic. Okay, I love that. Okay, talk to me like I'm in grade two, right? So, right. Uh, so, well, I, I am in grade two, so oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I'm in grade one, I'm a year behind. I, I kept a year behind. So there's a hundred trillion single cell bacteria in the human body, a hundred trillion single cell organism in the body. And that sounds like a lot, and it is. There's only 10 trillion human cells in the body. So there's 100 trillion single-celled organisms in the body that aren't human, and there's 10 trillion human cells. So single-cell bacteria, fungi and viruses, in our body, in your body and my body, Kurt, outnumber the human cells 10 to 1. So when you think you're alone at night, you're not alone. There's 10 times more single-cell bacteria in your body than human cells. And you're probably saying, Ooch, how come I don't have a flagella? How come I don't have, uh, you know, amoebic uh, things coming out of my eye? Well, they're so small. They weigh about three pounds. 80% um, of them are inside you in your large intestine. 20% are in your nose, eyelids, mouth, under your gums, in your ears, in your vagina, in your, not your vagina, in your vagina, in your armpit, in your butt. Um, but 80% are inside. And that being said, that three pounds that seems innocuous until you realize the brain weighs three pounds. Mm -hmm. And if you want to negate the gut flora, you basically what scientists are saying is that gut flora impacts your health as much as your genes do. Mm -hmm. So those 100 trillion cells, they're saying that weigh about three pounds. They're now realizing these primordial cells that have been around since one, one billion years after the Earth started. Right. Um, they impact your health as much as your genes do. So um, you could have a gene for disease or a predisposition for any kind of heart disease or cancer. But your health can be equally impacted by your gut flora. Mm -hmm. And your gut flora, the biggest way you can impact it is by what you eat. And this is why dentistry, hygienists, assistants, doctors, we are the gatekeepers of the mouth. We are the gatekeepers that impact people's gut flora. Hence, uh, dental conventions, we need to be talking more about this because your gut dictates as much as your health as much as your genes do. Mm -hmm. And if you can you eat, and who's in charge of the teeth and gums and tongue and jaw? Hey, think of the best yeah. practice show, the people that you're impacting. So dentists, hygienists, assistants, we are uh, the healthcare providers, the oral physicians, and the healthcare givers for the mouth, which is where food enters. Okay, yeah. So uh, that's why it's so pertinent to the dental field. Right. And, I mean, we think about two things. Number one, no one spends as much time with these people. I mean, people in general 
on a health basis other than dentists in the country. And also, too, you know this if you're a hygienist or a dentist. You open up somebody's mouth. You see way more than you want to see. And, Ooch, you see people coming, and you know like you know what's going on. People say, you go, uh, you might be grinding your teeth. And they go, I never grind my teeth. Or they, you go, you should probably floss. They go, I floss all the time. You know, you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, so – in the spirit of non-judgment, though, right? You know, right. in the spirit of non-judgment. But, but you're right, though. The, the, the mouth is the gateway. The public, yeah. if you said that to a, a Joe public, they say, I get that. But dentists are all saying, are you sure? Is this oral systemic link real? Uh, is this something right. I should be looking at? You know, besides the neck bone be connected to the shoulder bone, like what else is there? So I'm, I, I'm speaking 35 times a year mm -hmm. uh, to dental offices and healthcare providers about the mouth-body-mind connection. Uh, my newest program is Gut Flora. So do your patients have the guts to live life well? Right. And a lot of dentists don't realize. They think, why is that important to me? How does gut flora, how does gut flora impact what I do? Well, what they've shown is um, your guts, your gut bacteria actually release uh, a very important uh, uh, fermentation product called short-chain fatty acids. So you have them, I have them, we have them inside us right now. So SCFAs, these short-chain fatty acids are one of the most potent anti-inflammatory chemicals in your body. So if someone has a problem with eczema, psoriasis, periodontal disease, heart disease, cancer, um, you name the autoimmune disease, uh, I, they're actually saying now that they have a different gut flora than people who don't have these diseases. So um, you can actually tell an obese person from a lean person just by looking at their gut flora. Hmm. Uh, do you get an idea how much impactful this is? 80 to 90% of the serotonin and serotonin is a neurotransmitter that helps you and me feel happy. We make you and me happy, nice people to be around. Uh, mm -hmm. People who are depressed or anxious have low serotonin. Um, to give you how impactful this is on depression. People who are depressed, uh, the biggest reason for long-term disability is depression. They really? have low serotonin. 80 to 90% of the serotonin, guess where it's made? In the gut. Wow. So um, this is why mastering your gut, becoming a gut flora master, Honoring your 80 trillion flora inside your stomach is so important because if you ignore them, uh, you'll have less energy. And if they have, if, they, if they're not happy, you're not happy. If they're right. sluggish, you're sluggish. If they're yeah. sick, you're sick. I just wonder how brilliant you are. You're sitting at the intersection of all these things. Not only gut flora, but you're in the middle of the sleep conversation. You know, you look at the changes. What's going on? Just um, you know, all what I, there's there's a huge intersection ahead. Also, you can't open any page on the internet and not hear about the, the country's mental health crisis. So this is all interlinked. Don't you agree? Oh, like, for sure. And it's the sad thing is though, there is no fiber lobby, you know, there is no right. apple lobby. There is no inulin hobby, you know, so people need to eat more fruits and vegetables. And it's funny with, with all these things that impact people's health and poor gut health being at the center. And if we said the number one way you can impact your gut flora to make it healthier is change the way you eat. And that sounds so easy, doesn't it? And you realize 70% of North Americans don't eat fruit every day. So seven out of 10 of our patients will have not, not eaten a single piece of fruit in a day, mainly because fruit's got a bad reputation for being high in sugar. But because fruit has fiber, which your gut flora, guess what? Love, right. by seven out of 10 people not eating fruit in a day, it's impossible to be healthy. Uh, there was a study called The Global Burden of Disease, uh, and it was written up in The Lancet in 2012. And it said worldwide, four and a half million people die every year due, and they've actually taken it down to the fact of lack of fruit in the diet. So th th this same study, the global burden of disease, uh, said nine million people actually die from high blood pressure worldwide every year. Well, the second biggest one is, is lack of fruit at four and a half million. You're thinking, Ooch, how come I haven't heard this? I don't know, because there's no fruit lobby. There's no apple lobby. There's no grape lobby. I open up some grapes in the staff room, Half the team are going, why are you eating? Isn't that so full of sugar? I'm saying, look at me. Do you want to see a six pack for crying out loud? You know, so, so it's funny. Fruit does not make people fat. There is no diabetic in America because of fruit. You know, Elvis Presley didn't end up, you know, dying because of lack of fruit. John Belushi didn't die from, from eating too much fruit. Uh, John Candy, Jeff Farley wasn't lack of fruit, you know. Mm -hmm. So lack of fruit is killing four and a half million people in a year. Fruit does not hurt you. It's your friend. I don't know. I'll, I'll make a post on fruit on my Facebook page. Yeah. And I'll always get someone going, I, I heard that fruit is full of sugar. Yeah, it is. But, but the body lives on carbs. Uh, mm -hmm. you, show, show me, you show me a, a new mom that's low carb. 
You show me someone that's driving left instead of right. You know, the brain loves carbohydrates. So I think it's got a bad rep, a bad rep and for no reason, other than the fact that your 80 trillion gut flora love it. Right. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep coming back to the same theme all the time because, you know, repetition, people need to hear a number of times. But if your gut flora impacts your health as much as your genes do and you want to get healthier, you can't change your genes. Mm -hmm. But I can alter my gut flora by the way I eat. Yeah. And the number, and the number way you can affect your gut flora is to eat more fiber. Right. Fiber. And there's no more, there's no fiber lobby. So no one's, there's no one's picketing for more fiber. There's no fiber groups outside the White House. There's no, there's no big fiber, you know, but it, it's cheap. And um, there's a certain amount of grams that people need to eat every day if you're a woman, and a certain amount of grams that men need to eat every day to make their gut flora happy. And uh, there's a gentleman, a microbiologist, named of um, uh, John Sonnenberg in California, PhD. Okay. He said that our gut flora have a foundational keystone relationship with fiber. So that literally, if someone's not getting the fiber they need every day, it is impossible for your body to make all the neurotransmitters it needs. It's impossible to make all the serotonin you need. It's impossible to put out fires of inflammation. And people think, oh, it's easy, I'll eat more fiber. Well, the average North American eats a third to half of what they do need to eat every day. A third to half what they need. So, so, so the average American, is, and, and Canadian for that matter, is not healthy because of lack of fiber. Like, it, mm -hmm. like so as the more and more articles I read on this, the more and more I realize how easy it is to look and feel healthy. People ask me, you know, you've got four hours sleep, you've got eight hours sleep. How do you look like the way you do? I'm eating what I should be eating to feed the most important organ in my body, which I'm now saying is your gut flora. Wow. That's pretty amazing. And, you know, you look at all of the trends that are going on. If somebody's not eating fruit, like let's say I'm a dentist watching this and I go, oh, you're right. What would I do? Like I don't eat fruit. I eat the worst things. You're not saying a dramatic transformation. We're, you're talking just incremental changes in the way that you behave on a daily basis could make a huge impact in the way you feel overall long term. Exactly. And that's like people like, when they want to change a practice, you, you don't go out and make a, you know, a total huge reversal. It, it's impossible. It'll drive you crazy. You fall off the wagon immediately. So I tell people, start looking at your fiber content. If, if you don't even have to understand this as much as just trust us, this mm -hmm. is the science. This is scientific American does not sell fruit. Nature journal does not sell fruit. You know, Dr. John Sonnenberg in California doesn't sell fruit, you know, but, but fruit is one of the key things you can add to your diet that'll make you healthier. And mm -hmm. The apple, there's a, there was an article in an Annals of Oncology, and it said that if a woman ate um, uh, two apples a day or went from one apple to two apples, you could reduce your breast cancer incidence by 25% by eating an apple a day. That's and crazy. So the old adage, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. What if that were true? It could be two a day. If you want to go crazy, right. it's two a day because an apple is about four or five grams of fiber. So two apples is eight grams. The average woman needs 25 grams of fiber every day. The average man about 35 to 38 grams of fiber. This is from Wendy Ward, PhD, a registered dietitian and PhD up in Canada. So 25 grams for women, 38 for men. The average North American woman is eating 10 to 12 grams a day, half of what they need. The average man about 10 to 15 grams a day. So that man, if you're eating half of the fiber you need, you're more likely to have trouble with your blood sugar because um, you're also more likely to have chronic inflammation because your gut flora eat the fiber. The mm -hmm. breakdown products of fiber is the short chain fatty acids. Remember that SCFA? So when, yeah. when gut flora eat fiber, think this is a foundational relationship. So we're not talking big science, we're talking your gut flora needs 25 grams of fiber daily. When your gut flora eats the fiber, they make short chain fatty acids. These short chain fatty acids are the most potent, biggest anti-inflammatory compound your body makes. And inflammation now they've shown is a key player in heart disease, and a key player in every stage of cancer, from initiation to progression to promotion and to metastasis. So uh, you have poor anti-inflammatory compounds in your body, um, you could be more likely to get heart disorder. How could you stop that tree? How could you cut the trunk of the tree of cancer off at the roots instead of picking the leaves? Fiber, <laughs> see that? So I, I like to cut to the chase. I really like to make things easy for myself. So fiber is foundational. So your, your gut flora eats the fiber, they make short chain fatty acids. Those short chain fatty acids also help immune cells called Treg or Treg cells. So capital T, capital R, capital E, capital G, so Treg cells. Treg cells talk to your immune system and they make it smarter. So literally, if you go back down through the line, if you're not eating enough fiber, your immune system is not that smart. So it starts calling things bad that aren't bad, like an apple, uh, grains, it starts uh, being hyperinflammatory. 
skin cells, itchy, eczema, psoriasis. So you have an overactive immune system. It's not a strong one. It's weaker because mm -hmm. foundationally it's not getting its main needs met, which is being trained by your gut flora who need to eat fiber. <laughs> okay. Right. So I'm trying to make it really easy for people. So, so one of my questions on my new patient exam now is, um, do you eat healthy? And every patient says yes, because they all assume they do. And because I say, how much, how much fruit and vegetables do you eat? Oh, I, I don't eat fruit because of the fat, because of the sugar. Mm -hmm. And right away, I do an intervention. You know, I, I get Dr. Phil in and we do an intervention. But I, I'm really helping people at a foundational level. And in the middle of a new patient exam, I'm getting patients say, you know what? My husband needs to see you. Or my son is an athlete, and they're wondering why he has this and this condition. He's got bloating. He's constipated. My, my son needs to see you. I said, I'm not a doctor. But she goes, well, you're the first person to ever talk to me about fiber. And I've been going to doctors for 60 years. You know, right. so um, uh, fiber is king. And... Uh, and as you can see, I get excited about it because it, it's so uh, foundational for people to enjoy overall health. Yeah, yeah. And for people that say this is hard, I mean, it's hard being unhealthy. Okay, that's that's one thing. That, now, you travel a lot, too. Give us an idea, like a perspective on a really – you're a super healthy guy. But, well, like, what's easy? You're traveling. You know, sometimes it's hard to find good, healthy foods. But, like, on a daily basis, what, what does it look for you just on health, on, on fruit intake and fiber intake for you? Okay. You really got to, um, I, I said today, I did, I did what's called, I, I front load my day. Okay. Um, the flight left at two. I used to work right to one and kill myself getting there. And I realized self-care is important. If I'm a caregiver, I need to take care of myself first. So I, I take the day off from traveling now. So uh, at nine o'clock, um, I had olive oil in, in a pan. I was cooking with olive oil, which it's, it's a myth that you can't cook with olive oil. As long as you're not smoking it, you can cook with olive oil. So I sauteed mushrooms in. Mushrooms have... They release a, a, a nutrient called ergothionine, which uh, takes free radicals out of your eyes. It, it purges free radicals, exhaust out of your bone marrow. This is ergothionine. So I, I, this is my this is mushrooms. This is mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I put garlic in, which is universally known as an antioxidant and as an antipyretic and uh, antifungal, antibacterial. I shred in raw turmeric. So raw turmeric is known from the, the Houston Anderson Center as being an anti-inflammatory, potent anti-inflammatory. Um, so that's starting my olive, that's, that's in my olive oil, simming. So mushrooms, garlic, and turmeric. I now throw in arugula. Arugula, um, have you ever heard of nitric oxide? Yes. You think of it as in race cards. Well, it's released in every uh, blood vessel in our body. You and I have 60,000 miles of blood vessels. The innermost layer called the endothelial lining releases nitric oxide, and it helps your blood vessels expand and contract, and it helps them work better. Arugula is the most potent food form of nitrate, which makes nitric oxide. So arugula should be on your top of your shopping list along with beets. So um, I put arugula into that mix. I put arugula into my mix of my, my olive oil, my mushrooms, my turmeric, and my garlic. I put arugula in. You're thinking, ooh, how does that taste? Who cares? Like, you know, think about this. We're talking health, vibrant energy. We're talking being able to look 10 years younger than your driver's license for crying out loud. Yeah. I chop up some tomatoes. I throw them on. I now got lycopenes. Lycopenes are known by nutrition by nutritionists as being potent for, for men with prostate issues. It's for heart health. It's full of flavonoids. And then I throw two or three free-range organic eggs in. And why organic? A little bit more expensive. But I ask anytime I have really – I have a lot of experts as patients. I have seven psychiatrists as patients. I have naturopathic doctors. I have a lot of medical doctors that come to see me. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But um, they love they – love, I, I talk more about teeth. I talk about teeth, but also – the globe, I talk about the whole person. Anyway, a naturopathic doctor once told me that if you can eat something every day, try and go for the organic form because you're going to build up pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. Right. So all our eggs at our house are a little more expensive, but we put organic eggs in. So now I got mushrooms, turmeric, garlic, simmering in olive oil. I have arugula in, which is the, the nature's most potent form of nitric oxide, which makes oh, your 60,000 miles of blood vessels work better. And there is a veggie Viagra effect, which... Uh, We'll talk more about it at a different show, I guess. It's Absolutely. For sure. And then you throw your organic eggs in. Because mm -hmm. um, the whole thing about Viagra is that it, it works at the endothelial lining. It makes a muscle, the vessels expand. So veggie Viagra, arugula and beets. So mm -hmm. if I see someone in Whole Foods with a big fat of beets, I'm like, hey, I know what you're, <laughs> now you're heading home. To, so. You go, buddy. Yeah. Go, buddy. But anyway, so, so that's what I eat for breakfast. So it, that is not a kickback breakfast. That's awesome. Well, and I'm, I'm sure your body feels good, but I'm sure your brain, you know, the thing that you need in most dental professionals is you need both. You got to be, you got to feel good because your support system, your ability to use these and this determines how long you practice, but you also have to be able to use this. I'm sure you're thinking a lot better now that you're eating better. 
Well, it's a central processing unit. I think the most important organ is, is the brain. Uh, you're nothing without it. Um, yeah. Your memories are gone from short-term, made into long-term in your hippocampus. Right. The hippocampus is half the size. when They do al al uh, autopsies on people with Alzheimer's. Their hippocampus, the two of them, is half the size. Chronic stress shrinks your hippocampus. A diet of high refined carbs and processed foods. So if you like your fast food and junk food, guess what? High, high diet of sugar, which is not good for your teeth, or your, your gingival tissue, is also not good for your hippocampus because the hippocampus shrinks with stress and it shrinks with processed food. Mm -hmm. So if you want a full plump hippocampus, you can remember names and uh, patients' names and treatments and treatment options and uh, post-op complications and allergies. You need a nice, full, plump, youthful hippocampus. So anytime someone who, as they get older, say, I have a poor memory, I'm thinking shrunken hippocampus. But hippocampus is also adaptable. You start exercising, makes it plump. You do some meditative practices like prayer, tai chi, yoga. You can actually make your hippocampus more plump. If you change to eating more vegetables, mm -hmm. eating more fruit, you can also um, increase the size of your hippocampus. So my memory is here because of my food and how I exercise and some of my spiritual practices. Right. And I'm sure you get this question a lot with dental professionals. We're, we don't see ourselves as well, but we're very worried about the generation we're responsible for. So when it comes to kids introducing fruit, I'm sure people ask you all the time, how do I get my kid to eat healthy? You know, do you, anything you would say to that if well, they're not on a path of eating healthy? Yeah, like that. You got to be enthusiastic about it. If, if dad's yeah. saying, go read your book and he's, you know, it's his third hour of uh, Dungeons and Dragons on, 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 on his video board, it's not going to happen. So at our house, we have bowls of fruit out. Um, Carrie's amazing. Blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, um, our fiber, sourdough bread. Um, I buy, if you want to, one of the best breads to buy for fiber, look at a bread and look at the back of the bread. This is going to be a keen defining moment in your life, Kirk, because you're going to look at the, instead of just looking at the price of the bread, looking at how heavy the bread is, look at how many grams of fiber. You want to eat bread that's at least three grams of fiber a slice. So if you're able to eat grains, and some people aren't able to eat grains because of they don't have the digestive enzymes, and if 6,000 enzymes come from your gut flora, you need to develop more diverse, diverse gut flora so you can digest more food. Yeah. So people like Michael Phelps and people who are amazing athletes have very diverse flora. People who get sick all the time, people with um, depression, obese people, people who can't lose weight, people who are undergoing accelerated aging, people with cancer all have less diverse flora. Mm -hmm. So people who age well have very diverse, very, lots of varieties of their flora. And one way to increase the variety of your flora is to eat more fiber. Yeah, fiber. There yeah. we go. So, yeah. so three grams of fiber in every slice, uh, preferably four. But um, I bought some bread. In, uh, you said Ezekiel. Did you start to say Ezekiel bread? Or what, what, what Ezekiel bread is, is a great bread. I'm not, a spon I'm not sponsored by them, but Ezekiel bread has three grams of fiber. It's a heavy. You pick up the Ezekiel bread. It's like carrying a two-pound weight into your into your, the backseat of your car. It's, uh, I have one or two slices a day. I had I had – eight grams of fiber strictly for my Ezekiel bread today, which is amazing. And there's also there's some protein shakes. It, there's certain protein shakes have fiber in them also. So we'll, Carrie and I both enjoy a meal replacement shake that has six grams of fiber in every shake. And so a lot of reasons why people feel great eating a good meal replacement shake is because of the, the grams of fiber. People think of the protein. I'm thinking of the fiber problem. You, could, you, can, you can live without, you can have, live without less protein, but you cannot be healthy without with less fiber. So I look at protein content of my meal replacement shake and I also look at the fiber content. So the one that Karen and I have is, is six grams. So I'm a, I'm a huge fiber junkie. And even in the last six months that I've been studying this and lecturing on this for, and I've started e eating my more fiber, I'm feeling amazing. I'm stronger than ever. I'm actually, actually working out less and looking leaner, which is crazy. Because when your gut flora is happy, they become more efficient in grabbing nutrients from the food you eat, if that makes sense. Right. So my gut flora would get more efficient in extracting more nutrients so now I have more serotonin, I have better neurotransmitters, I'm digesting food better, and my immune system's stronger. I'm not, I'm not even saying knock on wood because um, I like my, one of my assistants said, my husband said he wears his immune system like a Superman's cape. I'm not going to jinx it. But mm. it's now March um, 6th, and I have yet to have a cold this year. Um, didn't take a flu shot because um, you don't, do you really need a flu shot if you're eating healthy, sleeping well, washing your hands? eating vegetables, eating fiber, because the biggest impact on your immune health is how much fiber your gut floor is eating. Because you know what? 70% of your immune system, guess where it is, Kurt? It's in your gut. It is in your gut. It is in your gut. So, so you know where that was leading. So, so yeah. if you want to be, have, be more resistant to colds, get a stronger gut core. This is coin. This is cash down here. This, this area here is not just the abs. It's what's inside. And the, the right. gut flora 
is the strength of you. And there are experts now saying it acts like an organ. Yeah. Well, and this would link all the whole thing, you know, things that we've heard about the belly fat, you know, the belly fat and how dangerous that is. There's been so many books around this, but it's a direct, a direct correlation about what's going on in the gut, wouldn't you think? Oh, oh, for sure. And I think a big part of that is uh, people need to retrain what they think. Most people haven't heard about how good fiber is or it sounds boring. Like I'm sure right. moms and grandmothers and great grandmothers fears, eat your grains, eat your vegetables. Hey, have you heard eat your vegetables before? But, yeah. but I love being told why. You know, I'm a big why guy, you know, being a student, why? But yeah. as soon as I heard why, when I heard that broccoli makes your gut barrier more intelligent, like our gut barrier keeps out bad guys, lets in good guys. But I heard that broccoli, broccoli makes your AH receptors on your intraepithelial lymphocytes, mm -hmm. it makes them smarter. I'm eating broccoli all the time now, but it's almost every cruciferous vegetable. So broccoli, cauliflower, these make your gut smarter. They make right. your immune system and your gut smarter. So now I'm eating more broccoli because my mom told me why. You know, I heard from my grandmother, but now that I've heard why, I am stoked. Yeah, it's awesome. Let's talk about the implications of the people that we serve, like patients. Now, you mentioned that you do a lot of education, but let's talk about what we see and how this relates, you know, to periodontal disease, you know, treatment planning. What are some of the things that you're seeing in your practice? Well, when you're thinking healing, like when you do an extraction, uh, when you put a, a provisional crown on and you want to, um, say if you're waiting to take the final impression because the tissue is not healthy, or you have a person that's, uh, that's diabetic or pre-diabetic and they can only afford a six-month recare. Meanwhile, they should be on three and four. So we're always wanting the patients to have better healing, which healing is based on the quality of your immune system. So the minute I know someone is not healing well, the minute I know someone has just gone through an extraction, or say if they're having peri-implantitis, like I know a lot of periodontists right now are saying, oh my God, peri-implantitis. These patients are rejecting the implants. You know, well, how can we make implants better? I'm thinking, how can I make my patient's immune system stronger? Right. How can I make them stronger? How can I lower the inflammation in the body? How can I make their immune system smarter? Well, now we know more about gut flora. If I get my patients eating the right amount of fiber, so 25 grams for women, 38 for men, and the gut flora eat the fiber, they ferment them. They make short-chain fatty acids. The short-chain fatty acids influence the Treg cells. Now the Treg cells are talking to the immune systems to make it smarter. So mm -hmm. I can cut back inflammation in my patients simply by changing their what they know about diet and what they know about vegetables and fruit. And a lot of dentists and hygienists think it's outside the scope of practice. Um, but you know, Tufts University, I heard this from Dr. Michael Greger, MD. He said Tufts University in the United States, they have the most hours of um, uh, medical student, patient edu sorry, student education and uh, nutrition, and it's 20 hours. Dentists and hygienists get more than 20 hours. So it's well within our scope of practice as dentists and hygienists to talk diet, to talk about omega-3s, to talk about vitamin D, to talk about fiber, talk about fruits and vegetables, and to encourage patients to heal by encouraging them to have eat five to 10 servings a day. And if patients say, why? You don't have to get out the big flow chart and look back at your notes from Chicago Boone's meeting for my course. You just gotta say, because your gut flora depends on fiber to train your immune system. That's why you need to eat five to 10 servings a day. Isn't that easy? It just flows off your mouth like that. Super easy. You gotta get everybody on the same page too. Your team, I'm guessing your team talks to the patients, not just you in that respect. Well, yeah, they have to. They have to. Are you seeing me? Am I in a, like a Stephen King movie? Am I lit up enough? Or is it starting to get? Yeah, uh, you're lit up. You might want to just. Oh, uh, did did the did the lights go down just a little bit, or did the? There you go. There that's you good. go. That's perfect. There you oh, go. That's okay. great. Sorry. Right. Right. It's like I was in a Stephen King movie there for a second. You know. Just... Well, I know you're in front of a window, and maybe sometimes the light changes outside, so it can adjust that. But now it's I can see. Dark, you just it's getting dark here. I'm working. I'm going to work like nine hours tomorrow, but I'm I'm sharing the night before, so this is uh, it is getting dark here. It's like yeah, and you're in the city of Philadelphia, the big Super Bowl champions. You know, tomorrow you're gonna. Now, for those of you that are watching Gucci tomorrow, you're just in for such a treat because you can't help but feel better every time you speak. Um, and all, so I'm, you know, we're all grateful for that. What, uh, what other things that we need to know about the, the future of the dental profession, where we're headed and how this relates to maybe the long-term implications of dentistry? Well, I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, helping people, um, think through how you can help people be healthier. I think right now there's a big thing called now antibiotic stewardship. They're now saying that, uh, they want dentists to, do they really need the antibiotic? And, uh, you know, right, right now with artificial joints and hips, especially if a person is not immunocompromised, uh, they said there's really no science behind why we give people prophylactic antibiotics for hip and knee replacements. So for the last 30 years, we've been giving people a prophylactic antibiotics, you know, amoxicillin or clindamycin or penicillin before their, their, their dental procedure. And then I was saying uh, the science wasn't really that good, so we changed the dental practice now. So now they're making us wear 
do your patients really need the antibiotic before the procedure? Because if a person's coming into your office four times a year for perio, and you're giving them two grams of amoxicillin, and uh, Robin Chutkin, who's a gastroenterologist, wrote a great book called The Microbiome Solution, incredible book. Um, she said, if you take a single course of antibiotics, it disrupts your gut flora for six to 12 months. And for some people, it never comes back. Mm. So we've been giving people antibiotics for 30 years. So now we're saying, you know what? Uh, the science is not there anymore. We, we're now discouraging dentists from doing that. We're now saying that, uh, you know, rethink it and do it on a patient by patient basis, depending on the orthopedic surgeon, which is fine. But they're saying, if you are going to give an antibiotic for an abscess, cellulitis, or an issue with your patient healing, they're actually saying, um, if you give, give an antibiotic, it might be a good idea to talk probiotics. And everyone's heard the term probiotic. Mm -hmm. So probiotic, what it does is it lessens the chance of having a, a disruption for your gut flora. Because don't forget, if you take a single course of antibiotics, Robin Chutkin, gastroenterologist, said you're disrupting the patient's microbiome for anywhere from six to 12 months. That's a year. Right. So if they're on antibiotics two or three times a year, they said the average two-year-old has been on antibiotics three times since up to age two. The average 21-year-old has been on antibiotics 18 times. So some kids are starting behind the eight ball. And there's, a, there's actually a microbiologist named Marty Blazer, PhD out of New York. He said, if you're on antibiotics a lot, regularly, you have up to 20 to 50% more likely chance of being obese or diabetic and having allergies because antibiotics disrupt your gut flora and gut flora change and actually makes your body hyperabsorb calories. So when some people say, every time I look at food, I gain weight, it could be true because if their gut flora is disrupted, it means they hyperabsorb calories and now they have a hard time losing weight. So one way to establish more balance to the, your, 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 your gut is to take a probiotic. It's such an easy thing to do that cheap, anywhere from you know, 20 to $40 a month. Um, uh, you know, look at the brands. I love temperature stable. Have you, have you, Kurt, have you ever taken a probiotic yourself? Have you taken no, it? No, I haven't, but I'm very, you got me, you got me fully engaged and, and well, curious. All the How science I was saying, there, there's definitely science behind it. People have irritable bowel. So mm -hmm. I, I spoke to 1,000 people last Friday in Chicago, 1,000 people. 10% of the population has irritable bowel. So 100 people in that audience that day suffer from irritable bowel, so bloating, constipation, diarrhea, uh, never feeling full, never feeling empty, which is a big problem when you have it. Most people think, oh, what's that about? Trust me, 10% of people are constantly either bloated, constipated, having diarrhea, and you don't feel well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that, that impacts them. So they've shown that probiotics can help them, and it takes anywhere from one month to up to a year of taking probiotics to feel a good result. Um, the other one is antibiotic-associated, anti AADs, antibiotic-associated diarrhea. So people who take an antibiotic and it decimates their flora and they get diarrhea, or they can get the really dangerous one called C. difficile. Everyone's heard of C. diff. 14,000 people a year die from C. diff, so it's, it's a killer. Um, so probiotics can help heal um, antibiotic-associated diarrhea, and it also the science behind irritable bowel syndrome. So all the science right now with probiotics is being with sick people. So this is kind of cool. I have one of the first studies here. I can't show you too close. It's my secret study. I didn't do it. but. Because I'm an exercise scientist, I get the journals from the American College of Sports Medicine, and also I'm a trainer. Um, this study was done on healthy people. They, they've done very few studies with healthy people with probiotics. Well, they took elite athletes, and they've actually shown that elite athletes, because they overtrain or are stressed, they often get colds and flus more often in the wintertime, especially in the wintertime. Wow. Um, uh, what they've shown is they did a, a double-blind, random, placebo-controlled study, and they gave them probiotics for 14 weeks. So they had two, two groups, one control, one placebo. And they gave the control group uh, a probiotic twice a day for 14 weeks. Well, that group had a scientifically reduced, statistically reduced amount of colds and flus than the group that had the placebo, meaning that if you're an overtrained elite athlete, you don't get sick as much. And what they've shown is, though, we can extrapolate that to the, the, the population. Because your grandma's saying, what does an elite athlete got to do with me? Well, if your life is stressful, so think of a dentist, hygienist. Mm -hmm. Think of a busy dad, a busy businessman. Think of the road warrior. Think of a busy... Um, interviewer, think of a podcaster, think of a dad of four, you know, with, with stuff going on. Yeah. So you, you, your challenge, right? Your immune system's challenge, your, your nervous yeah. system's challenge. So you might benefit from a probiotic. And they've actually shown the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Association, January 2017, that you can reduce your chance of getting sick, which means your immune system is stronger. Isn't this cool? Isn't, I'm, isn't sold. Cool? I'm, I'm sold. sold. What, what's, what's your favorite? favorite? I, I like Hyperbiotics. Hyperbiotics is an American company. Um, I take Pro Complete. Pro Complete is uh, a once a day. It's pre ro dash complete. Uh, they also have a number of different ones. Uh, they have Pro Dash Fifteen that can be taken once or twice a day, depending on your issue. But I think you can buy it on Amazon. I think you can buy it. Uh, you can go directly to the website and buy it. 
but it's called Hyperbiotics. And uh, I love the company. I've seen them at some shows and I respect what they do. And you think what they do is the fact that they often don't need, because I used to say you need 50 billion uh, colony forming units in each capsule. And 50 billion sounds like a lot to the average person, but you need 50 billion because when you, when you're, when that probiotic goes through your stomach, which has a lot of acid, 96% of it's destroyed. So when the average probiotic, it just 96% of it's destroyed. Only 4% of that 50 billion make it to the large intestine where it's needed. It's not needed anywhere else at the large intestine. Well, hyperbiotics, they have some kind of patented capsule and they have a 60% survival rate. So when I hear 60%, that's why they don't need 50, 50 billion. They have things like five and 10 and 12 billion. So it's a little bit easier to digest. Uh, they have a kid's one. My, my little Theo takes uh, his uh, pro kids every day and he's pooping up a storm, so he's doing great. <laughs> but, um, and people don't think how much poop is, but you miss a few days pooping, you tell me how much, how, you know, how much, how much, how, how much fun are you if you haven't gone in three days? So um, a good sign of a good microbiome, good gut flora is going to the bathroom regularly, right. having good energy throughout the day. If you have a lot of peaks and valleys, that's a sign of a gut flora problem. If someone has a hard time losing weight, gut flora problem. If someone's got brain fog or lack of mental clarity, forgets phone numbers that they should know, I'm thinking gut flora. If someone has low serotonin, instead of antidepressants, um, sure, there's, there's medical reasons and you might need to see a psychiatrist, psychiatrist. Look at the food you're eating. If you don't have good tryptophan, if you don't have good foods that support serotonin, you'll need an artificial kind. But nature gives you the perfect kind in the food you eat. So grains, bananas, um, dairy, if you can eat dairy, and uh, turkey, tryptophan, precursor of serotonin, and 90% of it's made in your gut. Um, if someone has a weak immune system, ex eczema, psoriasis, if someone has joint problems, I, I sound like a snake oil salesman, but you, you think of all the diseases they say that we have no cure for, right? Mm -hmm. All those diseases, uh, fibromyalgia, um, uh, depression, all, all we do is treat the symptoms. I'm thinking foundational. A lot of people are studying the leads. I'm thinking, you're wasting your time. I go down the branch, I go down the trunk, I go down to the root of the problem, and I'm thinking gut flora. And when I'm thinking ways to expand my gut flora and make it more diverse, I'm thinking probiotics is an easy one. That's a go-to one, like $20, $30 a month. And that's an investment in my mental clarity, right? That's an investment in digesting food and having good metabolism. And um, exercise increases the diversity of the flora. So exercise is not only good for the six pack and the shoulders, but it makes your gut flora more diverse, which means it is stronger and more durable and it makes your immune system more impenetrable. Right. Now let's talk about that because you and I have talked, how much exercise do you need uh, that, that's been proven by science to add to this formula? Well, great question. Because, you know, for years, last 10 years, they talk about 150, 150 minutes a week of moderate and 75 of intense. Well, the newest information on McMaster by a, a PhD by the name of Martin Gabala says we can do as little as five minutes most days. And if you do interval training, so if you do high intensity, low intensity, high intensity, low intensity, and it's that back and forth in intensity, as little as seven minutes, it's equal to an hour. Like, think about what I said. Like, I'll talk in front of a thousand people and I'll say, who here has hours and hours of time to exercise? One guy puts up his hand in Jamaica last week. I'm thinking one guy. Most of us are time starved. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone wants a more efficient way. So I'm thinking interval training. Or if you're a couch potato or older or you haven't trained in a long time, even moderate intensity where you walk for a block, walk quicker for a block, walk for a block, walk quicker. So it can be modified even for the couch potato. Even if someone's in a walker, you can go on a walker slowly and you can speed up your pace for 10 bits for, for you know, 30 seconds and then slow it down again. So mm -hmm. interval training is not just about wind sprints and, you know, looking like Michael Phelps. It's, you can modify it. But I'm staying as little as five to seven minutes a day. And the only exercise I'll do today, Kurt, and I'm about 9% body fat, is seven minutes of interval training on the hotel gym. And that'll make, that'll make my gut floor happy. They, in rodent studies, they've actually shown that um, rats, when they do my study gut floor tests on rats, when they do, do the, on, on the wheel turning, rats that have a wheel make twice as many short-chain fatty acids. Remember short-chain fatty acids? Mm -hmm. They train the treg cells, make immune system stronger. So if you exercise, these little rodents exercise on the wheel, as ones that don't have a wheel, they have twice as many production of short-chain fatty acids. This is mind-blowing. It's just exercise can make twice as many short-chain fatty acids. That's so powerful. So you're going to be in the gym today. Did you bring your gym shoes? Because I see you always taking photos. Sometimes you forget your gym shoes, so you're wearing your dress shoes. I think you're. I wear my dress shoes. You know, it's the best. If you want a clear gym, you wear your black shiny dress shoes with some black socks and black shorts. <laughs> I can empty a gym pretty quickly, especially if I start doing my Spider Man push ups. You know, I can empty the whole gym and have it all to myself. You know, we got to work out together one time, Kurt. You and your bat cape and me and my black shiny dress shoes. Oh, you'll just kick my butt. I am such a wimp. So, um, 
you know, I don't know. And the interval thing is so powerful. Like, I'm not a thing guy, but I did buy one of the Peloton bikes because I, and oh my gosh, the interval, even if you do a 20 minute ride, you're just, it's unbelievable how precise that is. And it's community-based training. So you're, you know, you're, you're riding with all these people all over the world. Now let's get back to, um, so we talked about, you know, the gut floor, we talked about the diet, we talked about how we might be able to supplement, talk about exercise. What else would, would we consider that would influence the health of gut floor? Love your question. So uh, this is cut to the chase here. So one of them is be less clean. Wait, wait, wait. Not okay, wait, wait, wait. Be okay, less yeah. clean? Yeah. No I'm hand saying, sanitizer? No. no you, don't, you don't need hand sanitizer at home. Uh, okay, wait. You got if you got to wash your hands after you go to the bathroom. True, like, true. They're saying some people buy all the kitchen counters. Some of those oh, kids yeah. come on the playground and they, as if the kids are having a, doing an appendectomy, you know, they, they scrub their kids' hands up to the elbows, you know, shaving yeah. their arms of hair to make sure the, the bacteria doesn't have time. But, but Emron Mayer, gastroenterologist, said uh, there's three reasons why, why kids are proposed to having so many allergies and asthma in the world right now. There's three reasons. One of them is too many antibiotics. So antibiotics are disrupting their, their health from six to 12 months. You know, moms bring the kids in for, for ear infections. Meanwhile, the ENT person says it's viral. And the mom says, oh, I want an antibiotic. Antibiotics don't work on viruses. The NT goes, okay, guess what? We'll write a prescription. But guess what? It's useless, but you've also you've disrupted the six. And I, I have an so ENT as patients. And she says, parents will come in insistent. And they'll say, no, it's a viral ear infection. Your kid does not need antibiotics. All you need is supportive care, you know, rest, fluids, and it'll get better. So too many antibiotics or antibiotics at the wrong time. Uh, a second one is too much sugar. People often think um, bacteria love sugar, but the majority of the sugar in our bodies hate sugar. And that's why processed food is, food is full of it. Because if you put um, um, any kind of processed food, like junk food on the shelf, and you forget it, three months later, is it green or moldy? Yeah. Never. It's never moldy because sugar yeah. stops us from molding. It, 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 it can right. sh shelf life. So too much sugar. And it's an 80% of all processed food. And the other one is too clean. Is that what we talked about? You know, people um, washing their hair every day and, and you know, putting these creams that are scrubbing and antibacterial, anti-napalm bacterial uh, deodorant, antiperspirant with sil uh, aluminum and parabens in it. So the stronger your deodorant, the stronger, guess what, the more incredible health like your bacteria get. So yeah. if you're using, you know, napalm as, as, as deodorant, your bacteria now looks like Thor, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. a lot of these gastroenterologists are saying, train your bacteria in your armpits to be your friend. And if you just wash, even the same wash with a very natural soap or wash without soap, unless you're digging in the field and laying sod or planting bushes, right. you can basically just rinse and rinsing leaves your natural bacteria. Remember, I said 20% of the bacteria is on your skin, nose, and mouth, and in your nose and eyes. So right. um, by scrubbing with powerful antibacterial soap every day, you're decimating your natural flora and you're causing imbalances, which leads to inflammation. So think of the skin diseases, think of rosacea. Think of all these powerful anti-acne creams that basically decimate the skin floor. And this is not my science. I'm reading it, I'm reading it from the, 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 the best gastroenterologist saying people are napalming their and destroying this natural skin flora, and they have more issues. When, like, you know, look at my skin. You look really close, you look at the, look at this. It's great. It's like, it's like Theo's bum, right? You know, is that how smooth it is? Um, I wash with very little soap. You know, I'm, I'm washing my hands like soap, and, and away I go. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, now go back to sugars, because we've talked about the natural sugars in fruit. Are there any other natural sugars that you would highly recommend other than fruit? Um, I'm a big fan of natural. So I, know, I think when people think you need to – sorry, I'm just plugging in here because I, I noticed the low power thing came on. and uh, I mean, <laughs> We might lose you in a second, huh? Yeah, we might lose you. See, that's, that's how much mental clarity I have. My hippocampus is so plump right now. You wouldn't believe it, Kurt. Hey, but okay. we were talking about this before we went in. You know, you get really good at what you're good at. Don't spend all your time on the things you're not good at. Okay, there so. we go. We got power. So, so okay. So we we talked about what kind of what? Just what sugars, kind of like other. We talked about sugars that are good for the body. Now you mentioned fruits. We talked about that. But are, are there any other sugars that might be helpful that are natural other than you refined? Know, I get lots of questions from hygienists saying, "How about xylitol?" Because right, because um, xylitol is you know alcohol sugar. However. Um, I always tell hygienists, what happens if a kid eats too many xylitol candies? They get what? Mm -hmm. Diarrhea. Yeah. So it upsets their flora. So our gut flora only likes a certain amount of natural sugar. So xylitol might be great and it might help having, you know, maybe making strep mutans be less attachable to the, to the teeth. 
But if you overdo your xylitol, you're going to get diarrhea, which means gut flora disruption. Okay, can so, I ask one more question? Oh, no, go ahead. Okay, Finish well, your talk. Okay. Well, uh, everybody that's watching this, I mean, everybody's got their thing that they enjoy. Now, I enjoy a glass of red wine. Is that good or bad? Um, and is that going to disrupt the gut flora? I mean, obviously, too much of a good thing like that can, but give me your thoughts. Good question. Well, we all know that um, alcoholics have really, really horrible guts, mm -hmm. and alcohol um, in moderation even still irritates the gut lining. And that's why one of the reasons why, and people always wonder, I get, I've got asked for 28 years, why can I drink with my antibiotic? Can I, can I take alcohol? People think, oh, will I make my antibiotic less effective? Well, I've now read in 2016 by gastroenterologists that the reason why they say don't drink alcohol with the antibiotic is the antibiotic disrupts your flora, but the alcohol irritates your gut lining. So when, if your gut lining is thinned or irritated or has got some perforations in it from too much alcohol or drinking alcohol at the wrong time, what happens is um, you now, it's, uh, the gut lining becomes more permeable and now you'll have amino um, um, proteins in your general circulation and you can get a thing called leaky gut, mm -hmm. which is brand new for modern medicine. However, naturopathic doctors and some other my gurus and my uh, mentors have been talking about leaky gut for 20, 20 years. So, um, so alcohol and antibiotics is not good because the two, the, both of them don't do very good things for your, for your gut at all. So mm -hmm. um, alcohol, I'd say if, if you're going to drink alcohol, have it with some food so you don't get the glycemic spike. Um, don't have, don't, never drink alcohol on its own. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, I was born in England, you know, London. So on the pubs, they have, what do they have on the, the bar besides when you're drinking beer? They have what? Like nuts or whatever. Uh, nuts yeah. and eggs. So basically it protects your stomach in a way, right? Yeah. When you talk about coating your stomach, I remember uh, um, a friend of mine, uh, her mom said, if you're going to go out drinking, make sure you have some milk before you go out. Well, <laughs> she didn't know anything about gut flora, but it helps protect your gut lining. So um, yeah. I'm not going to tell people to drink a, you know, a kefir or yogurt before their night out with the boys. But uh, just remember that if you have a gut flora problem, so dysbiosis, constipation, diarrhea, if you're obesogenic, if you suck too many calories out of your food, alcohol may not be your friend. Right. And I have people asking me, Uch, I have some stubborn five pounds, or I, I want to lose the last 10 pounds or four pounds. I'm thinking, you know what? You cut out that alcohol. It's amazing how lean you could look. Totally so, agree. Save it for celebrating, you know, yeah. not a nightly affair. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, any other last thoughts that you have on this? Because this is a brand new science. It's There's no question it's going to be a, an even hotter topic as we look at the future. But what would be some of your final thoughts on, on this? Um, I, I'm putting it together. I've got a very unique way of looking at things, as you see. It's a, it's a global perspective. I like to chunk it down. Into, I make things easy. I know I've gone to courses where I go to the course, and at the end of six hours, I'm more confused than I started, but mm -hmm. I like to empower an audience. I like to empower a reader to feel they can be successful easy. I like to people. I like to have people feel they can celebrate easy. So fiber is easy. An app, so if you don't eat apples, start eating an apple or double it so you get eight grams of fiber, right? So I like to make people think. So I'm thinking, go to my next lecture. Um, I'm in Philadelphia tomorrow. I'm in North Carolina at a, at a Seattle study club Friday morning for two hours. Then I'm flying to the Greenbrier Resort in West Virginia and doing two programs. I'll be the ADA in Hawaii. Are you going, Kurt? Are you in Hawaii? No, I won't be this year. I okay, so I'll be in Honolulu. Year. I'm doing a, a two-hour course in, uh, called Great Guts. Um, yeah. I think I'm doing a webinar for some Massachusetts um, magazine in a few weeks. Um, yeah. Now, let me just say this. If you're watching this, it's not hard to find Uche at all these meetings because he's the one with the line outside the door that goes all – you're like the Chick-fil-A <laughs> in, in, in an airport concourse, the line is all the way down the uh, the entire concourse. People waiting to get in. You have to go see him. It's just amazing. So thanks, Rick. You know, it's fun. I I I I'm my own. I experiment on myself. Like I don't tell anyone anything that I haven't tried. So if I'm telling someone about a certain probiotic, I've been taking it for the last 30, 60, 90, 120 days. If I'm talking about fiber, I'm eating 38 grams of fiber. If I'm saying seven minute workout, I do the seven minute workout. But if people want that seven minute workout, if they want to email me, I will email them a five-page um, summary of an interval training book I read, and I'll make it available. So it's a five-page uh, interval training book. It's called, it's called The Seven-Minute Workout, and it's called Exercise When Less Is More. When okay, less I, I want that. Now, people might be listening to this on iTunes. Can you just tell us, so if they're listening on iTunes, what your email address is? Okay, it's an easy one. It's um, fitlove, so fitlove at rogers. Rogers is R-O-G-E-R-S dot com. Fit love. I used to weigh 220 pounds 20 years ago. I used to be fat love. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's fit love. It's F, F as in Frank, I T L O V E at rogers.com. And I'll email you the attachment. No spamming. Just I'll send it out to you. I want people lean, fit, um, flexible, 
I want more fun in my life. I want more people to share it with. It's fun. I want audiences to be healthy. I don't want people falling asleep in the front row. Yep. You know. Now, what's the name of the the, the book that you're going to send them? I'll put that in the show notes. What's it called? Fit Love at Rogers. Uh, well, that's what email. You... So Fit Love at Rogers .com. That's the email address, and I'll send them a five page article for free. On uh, it's called Exercise When Less Is More, and it's on interval training, the science of interval training, in a very cold notes, easy to understand. This is all they need format. Cool. I want. I'm gonna get the first copy. So cool, buddy. Hey, I am so crazy grateful. Can you tell us how to find more? If okay, couple things. Number one, if you're watching this, you got to follow Uchi on his website. So Uchi gives your website. And then number two, if you're if you have a study club and you haven't had Uchi, you got to get Uchi to come to your study club. It's a, it's just a great perspective. But where can we find more about you? Okay, I'm uh, so drucci.com. So d r u c h e dot com. So drucci.com. I'm on Instagram at Fit Speakers. So Fit Speakers. That's plural. So Fit Speakers. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter at Fit Speakers. So at Fit Speakers is mine. I post my own. I don't delegate. I'm doing it because as I learn something new, I'm thinking this is so cool. People need to know. I'm I'm a this is people need to know guy. So if I'm tweeting, I am live tweeting, sharing from the heart. Um, Facebook is great. I love your Facebook page, Kurt. But um, uh, so Uchi Odiatu is my Facebook page. I got about 2,700 friends. I have room for 2,300 more if you want to come out and hang out with me and post a message. I get tons of messages. Like I get people commenting on the page, but I get people sending me Uchi, which probiotic, or I've got some stubborn weight, or I've got a patient with this, or how do I make my reception area more wellness focused? And I got this side commentary, and I'm answering as I go. And people saying, Uchi, how do you have the time? Well, I said, I'm waiting for a flight, it's late, or I like to answer on the fly, and it gives me a sense of what people are interested in because yeah. I make my lectures very pertinent because I'm taking in the questions people are giving me, and I'm not just giving people what I think they need to know. I'm, I'm actually morphing like a Michelin star meal a la carte as I go with the red yeah. pants on, Kurt, yep. the red pants are on. You are amazing, and you are one of the best at being able to authentically respond to people via social media or anything. So, buddy, you're just a great giver. So thank you very much. I really check Uchi out, email him. He'll send you this and he'll answer your questions. He's just a great, great human being. And buddy, I'm so grateful. We're going to get you back again and again and again. If you're watching the show, you want to see additional topics from Uchi, things that you're curious about, add them to the feed and I'll get this guy back. He can talk about anything for hours and hours and hours. And uh, um, so, we will, you'll see more about that. Also, too, if you enjoyed today's show, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share it with your friends, uh, because obviously we'd love to share great information like this. So until we see you next time, keep watching the best practice show. You guys have a great evening.